when it comes to Brexit, as always, we haven't heard a lot really from the fishermen. But as I always say, when we come back to these stories and we cover what has gone on in sort of the fishing industry, nothing really has changed since 2020. We warned what was going to happen to fishermen. We warned what the consequences were going to be of leaving the common fisheries policies. And bear in mind, because today we're not covering the English fishermen, we're covering the Scottish fishermen. Because yes, like Everyone else who worked in the fishing industry, they too voted for Brexit because they believe the Tories and all the Brexit spin, just as pretty much every other fishing industry person did at the time, of this new dawn that would be hailed from leaving the EU and leaving the common fisheries policy while completely ignoring the fact that once again it was, well, the UK government that just did not really care about fishing, and then believed the hype that really Boris Johnson was going to go to the hilt to essentially back an industry that economically is probably about the same as Harrods. Why on earth would Boris Johnson and the rest of the Tory party decide to well, back in industry that is economically worth as just as mount as Harrods. No one would do that. It would be stupid to do so. But, of course, this was part of the many promises, of course, that the Brexit has made and, well, have continued to, well, fail on. And like I say, you can tell why they don't talk about fishing anymore and have dropped it almost completely. Even Nigel Farage does not talk about fishing anymore. And when he does, it's done in the context of the Tories have betrayed Brexit. Not, of course, these were the wild promises that I made at the time about how amazing fishing is going to be after Brexit. But before we go jumping into uh, this today, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and an updation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, as always, there's the YouTube thank you button. And of course, the uh, YouTube uh, Pony Club as well that you can join up to as well. So, as always, thank you very much to those people who do help and support the channel. Even if you do, just click the like and share button. Like I say, it all helps. So, on with today's uh, story here, coming from uh, the Daily Record, with the title of Scotch fish, Scots fishermen who backed Brexit betrayed after Tories' promise of a new dawn. Fuming Scots fishermen who once backed Brexit said that they were promised a new dawn before being sold down the river. Well, it's not just Scots fishermen who are saying that. It's pretty much every fisherman in the UK who is saying that. So, veterans and industry chiefs have told the Daily Record that their sector has been treated as the poster boy for Brexit, was then sacrificed in a free trade deal that Boris Johnson agreed with the EU. Speaking at Peterhead Harbour, skipper Peter Bruce said that the reality of leaving Europe has shattered his trust in Brexiteer politicians. He said, It's been a big disappointment, to be quite honest. The politicians came up from London. Boris Johnson even came up a couple of times. The highest levels of government came up to Peterhead Harbour, promising a new dawn for the fishing industry. And that new dawn hasn't come. And of course, fishing was the key plank of the 2016 campaign, with slogans claiming that Britain would take back control of our waters and enjoy the seas of opportunity. And it led many fishermen, particularly the small boat fishers, to back leave with many detesting the EU system of quotas in its common fisheries policy. The, t uh, the, team, uh, sorry, the terms of the agreement that the XPM Johnson struck with Brussels, however, did not transform the UK into the once promised independent coastal state. Instead, significant EU access to British waters will still remain until at least 2026, when the UK and Brussels will begin to negotiate fishing stocks yearly. Peter, uh, Peter, the semi-retired skipper of the Budding Rose, said this, We were sold down the river from when we entered the common fisheries policy in Europe, and we feel very, very let down again with the deal that we've got. 
We must have been living in cloud cuckoo land. And in some ways, it was be if we expected to trust the politicians, but we take people at their word. The budding rose takes most of its catch to Peterhead Fish Market, which runs five days a week and remains one of the biggest white fish markets in Europe, with commercial buyers purchasing all their wares at its famous auction. Peter said, we saw a great opportunity to try and re to try and reinvigorate the industry, but that hasn't happened. In my mind, we've left the common fisheries policy in name only. The uh, the uh, the plaguey guys and the mackerel guys they've gained a bit of quota, but for my type of operation, which is whitefish, which is cod and haddock, we've gained very very little. Are we surprised? No. And here's the thing. All these little boat fishermen who were complaining about quotas and et cetera and all this stuff, this was because industrialization was really happening in fishing. And it is the exact same type of arguments that you would see these cottage industry weavers complaining about against all these big factories that have all these weaving machines. Of course, you cannot weave the same amount of cloth that a, a gigantic weaving machine in a brand new industrial factory driven by a steam engine can when you're expecting you know five women and five spinning wheels to to make at the same time it's the exact same argument these big trawlers can basically do in a month uh, can do in well in a day what one of these small boats takes about a month to do so of course this is where quotas have to be sort of you know you know carefully rationed out and whatever etc but of course this is what uh, the government, well, didn't really do. It sold off much of the, uh, well, <laughs> the quotas, knowing full well that these small boat fishermen could not catch the type of amount of fish that they, well, were saying that they could catch. Um, again, like I say, we've always said this. These fishermen did not help themselves um, in many of these arguments. And while you look at other countries and you see similar fishermen in similar types, they are getting a lot of support from their governments. This type of support does not exist in the UK. And it's down to fuel, technology, the cost of these boats as well. All this type of stuff that the British government did not invest in any of these fishermen at all. Even post-Brexit, this type of support just does not exist. But anyway, back to it. So just over the road, the workers at McConnell Seafoods which fillet, which fillets the fish uh, to order uh, from the market have a very similar outlook. Uh, Supervisor Stefan Napier said, we went into Brexit with our eyes closed and I think we were sold out. The bureaucracy caused by Brexit, such as the complicated paperwork and the loss of EU labour has also been a huge headache, Stephen said. We send fish to England, London, and to Belfast. And that's where we hit the problems with Brexit because you've got to fill out special stickers and manifests for them. We're piling a lot of manifests for Belfast and it was tricky to start with. Mike Peck, the chief of the Scottish White Fish Producers Association, had said that the trade barriers had also affect those out on boats. He said, one year after the deal was struck, it was a big negative for us because while we were in the Europe club, if any other member state didn't catch their allocation of cod, we could then have a mechanism where we could bring it in. We could catch it. When we came out, that mechanism disappeared. And it took us at least another year to try and create that to try and get access again. Although that's now more cumbersome. He said, one of our biggest negatives for me was the hyperbole spoken by people like Michael Gove and David Frost, the Boris Johnsons, all who knew what was going on and they were still spinning and spinning it. They were still spinning it because here, uh, here we are and we're still talking about how the post-2026 they will deliver. Uh, no, you won't. Go and read the trade and cooperation agreement. Europe still gets the same amount of fish after 2026. He had dismissed the UK's, UK government's efforts to try and tout a new deal with the EU, bringing at least £280 million worth of opportunities to British fishermen on this year as spin. Park said, it was in the fish we didn't catch. The Dover Sole was one of our big ones. Where we, where we, what we were going to do with that? 
It wasn't about fishing, about who gets it, he said. Guys, we need to make this a significant financial figure. Well, we can't th uh, what we can uh, uh, we can throw in what doesn't impact the EU. Donna Ford, the chief executive of the industry body for Seafood Scotland, said that labour shortages have also had a huge impact on processing. Previously, 80% of that workforce came from Eastern Europe. She said that businesses are now having production issues, having turned down growth opportunities due to lack of labour. But some in the industry still think that this post-2026 things will improve. Park said, I still get some members on the WhatsApp saying, yeah, but after 2026, it will be different. But I'm saying, guys, I'm going to tell you honestly, 2026 will make very little difference to your life. And that is still the case for most of these fishermen. And it's sad that some are seriously thinking that, oh, don't worry, after 2026, the UK is somehow, once again, going to go to the absolute hilt for for, for UK fishermen and somehow save an industry while jeopardizing far, far more GDP-worthy industries in the UK for the fishing industry, which, as we said, is probably worth about as much GDP to the UK as Harrods. And it all comes back to support. The UK government, for all its talks, just does not support UK fishermen. And it could. It could very well. And it has been very much a political choice not to do so. It could. We see other countries do this. We see them uh, give fuel subsidies. We see them give, you know, grants for buying new boats, new equipment, new technology, all this stuff. And yet the British government just continues not to do it so as we always said to fishermen you ain't gonna get any benefits from brexit just because you leave do not expect these seas of opportunity to suddenly be open to you because that's not going to happen and unfortunately some still do believe in cloud cuckoo land that in 2026 somehow these seas of opportunity will finally arrive and everything will be golden and amazing and all the promises of Brexit will come to pass. Unfortunately, as you can see, still many in the fishing industry still really do believe that. So, as always, thank you very much uh, for watching. And, of course, as always, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button before you leave. And, of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.